Okay, welcome everyone. This is Dr. Perry from the Pain Laser Center and StopChasingPain.com coming at you with the next webinar uh, from Stop Chasing Pain. And what I'm going to cover this time is uh, a very successful combination that's really the paradigm of what I see clients for every single day and how I've had such great success with uh, programs that I do for treating clients and the difficult cases that I see. And that's combining the uh, SFMA, which is the Selective Functional Movement Assessment, part of the uh, functional movement systems that I learned from uh, Gray Cook and Kyle Kiesel. And uh, my combination of that with the uh, Class 4 Deep Tissue Laser Therapy. So the combinations of the two together are extremely successful in clinical patient outcomes. And really, the top line in there says it all. I'm going to show you how to uh, treat the source of the pain or what we call the side of the pain but also look for the underlying cause of what's going on so we're gonna speak for about 20 minutes something like that sometimes uh, I try not to go too long because I love this type of subject but uh, we'll get going and I'll also go over a little bit of a sample case study when we go to it at the end so basically a little bit about me um, I have been doing laser therapy and movement stuff for about 8 to 10 years now and I own the Pain Laser Center in Ramsey, New Jersey and I also teach for the American Institute for Medical Laser Application which is AIMLA but really uh, I'm in the trenches every single day seeing clients that find me through uh, success and results. I specialize in very difficult chronic cases that other people have uh, some struggle with trying to figure out what's truly going on but also treating them with the uh, deep tissue laser therapy. I also teach right share information and just try to make people aware of the different approaches that people can get out of pain because I, I really refuse to believe that people need to suffer the way that they are and it's just a matter of expanding out your scope and your vision of things to look at the body in a little bit of a different way so basically this uh, whole thing with the SFMA started for, for me a long time ago when I came across a paradigm shift of you know why people kept getting pain and discomfort no matter what I was doing to them so they'd feel pretty good for a while and then they'd leave and come back and say doc the same thing is back and Basically, I came onto Vladimir Yonder's work, a very brilliant uh, physician who uh, talks about movement a lot. And that picture on the right side is basically one of his upper cross syndrome and lower cross syndrome uh, graphics. It talks about the posture of the body, of how tight muscles and weak muscles can change how you move. And basically, that quote says it all. It's, it's like, however undesirable um, pain is, it really is an important thing that tells us what's going on. It's an alarm signal, and uh, we need to look a little bit more about the body of how it moves and how people function during the course of their lifetime because I was only seeing people for maybe 30 minutes a day, but you know, they've got the other 23 hours and 30 minutes to just totally destroy their body, so there's no way I was going to be able to cup, keep uh, up with that and compete. And another uh, physician that uh, has been a big influence on me is uh, James Syriax, and he talks about looking – really just evaluating and taking the time to assess the body so you're going down the right path because if you're going down the wrong way and you're kind of getting tricked in a way by pain you're really not going to find the true um, cause of a problem hence the stop chasing pain on the bottom that's where the name came from but we're looking at you know, patterns of movement so whether people have pain or they don't have pain because that tells me a lot about what a person's life is like when they leave. And when people see me and they've tried everything else, the types of therapies that they've tried to get well tells me a lot about the type of therapies that are gonna work. So the last thing I wanna do is what everybody else has done because obviously if it was gonna work, they wouldn't be standing in front of me needing my help at that particular moment. So the big key word on these guys that you've seen in through here is basically movement. And the SFMA to me is the best program that I've found in all the years I've been doing this to help me zero in and find that exact target. But basically, it's a system. It's a map of finding dysfunctional patterns in the body that are painful or not painful. So I can develop a strategy for getting each individual well. Because you can't treat pain syndromes. You have to treat an individual human being. So what I mean by that is that if somebody comes in with knee pain, there may be a totally different cause of a knee pain from patient A to patient B. So you can't treat the knee pain the same for patient A from patient B. You have to find out from their history, from their movement, from their individual movement, for them that makes them unique, 
what is contributing to that. So some may come from an ankle, some may come from a hip, some may come from a lack of core stability called motor control. But you know, we'll kind of get into that a little bit long. But I want you to open up your mind is to just to start looking at individuals and don't be afraid to begin to look and see how they move. A lot of doctors treat clients, but they get them on a table and they just isolate painful joints. So if you go in to see most doctors, they're gonna look at your knee and think that your knee is a problem. I'll do all these orthopedic tests to see if this hurts or that hurts. But I want to see how your knee functions when you stand up and when you move. Does it change? Does it get better? Does it get worse? Because last time I checked, when you leave my office, you're not going to be laying on a table all day. You're going to be moving. So I need to see exactly what is going to be leading to that problem. And what you'll soon see is that the painful area is usually the one place that's actually working the best. It's doing its job the best it can. It's just getting tired. It's getting worn out. So instead of chasing that painful side all the time, we want to look for really what's causing that. The compensation is what most people go after. So we're going to go right and zoom in on the cause. And regional interdependence there basically is the concept of everything relates to the other. So if somebody has a pain in their shoulder, that could easily come down from someplace lower, even as low as your ankle. So the body has to adapt and change based on its surroundings and its environment to survive. So your nervous system and your brain are going to kick on in and they're going to tighten stuff up. They're going to loosen things up. They're going to do whatever they have to do to keep you moving. And it doesn't always happen in a functional fashion. Unfortunately, it's usually dysfunctional because your body is only concerned about that particular moment. It doesn't care about the next second or tomorrow or what's coming up in your life. It only cares about what it has to do at that very moment to make sure that you don't get hurt. So it does anything and everything to survive. It's a basic primal mechanism. So we need to look at that when we see how you move. So the SFMA basically uh, is looking at seven big global movements. I look and see how well you can bend over, how well you can bend backwards. You rotate what your neck is doing, what's how your body functions from left side to right side. Is it symmetrical? Can you do something on one side that you can't do on the other? That's a single leg what your shoulders are doing in relationship to your upper back and in your neck, and how well your body can control an overhead squat movement. So it's a very intensive program, not in regards to pain, but looking at see how well you can move in any direction of what we call vectors. So we start big, we look at the overall global picture, and then I can focus it down and narrow it in and hit the bullseye just for you to see which one of those guys is the big thing. And the, non, the secret to this is that the pattern that is dysfunctional on you, which means you can't do it. It may be restrictive. It may be a little bit more difficult to do, but it does not hurt. There's no pain associated with it. That's my bullseye. That's what I'm going for. So I'm going to take a look at where your pain is and note that, but I'm going to look outside of that with some of the stuff that I'm going to do, and I'm going to treat that site of pain with the laser. And then when I go and I start to do the source of pain, and then we're going to look at some exercise and interventions on that. So uh, you can see it's a lot different than what most evaluations people go through because I really want to see what your body is telling me or not telling me. So uh, site versus source is a big thing and that's really what this is about because we're going to treat both. And uh, <clears throat> Dr. Lewitt here is a, just a brilliant, brilliant physician and he says it all right there. If you just treat that side of pain, you're going to be lost. So we need to do both and that's what this whole webinar is about. So why do we get pain? What is pain? And uh, there's two causes of it, in my opinion. So you've got a chemical cause, which means that you have irritated an area, inflamed or damaged cells, and you have chemical damage in a cell that actually releases <clears throat> stimulations to your nervous system, and your nerves send that signal up to your brain, and your brain registers pain, and then it sends it back, and you say, ow. So until you heal over that chemical damage, you will not get out of pain. So the site of pain is where your chemical damage has been done, <clears throat> but I want to see why you got it. And that typically leads from a, <clears throat> excuse me, a biomechanical dysfunction where a movement impairment syndrome, it could be joint, it could be soft tissue, what we call extensibility, where tissues just don't move. But you, all that dysfunction is going to wear and tear and eventually your body's going to have enough and it's going to send a chemical messenger to you and that sucker is pain. Whether you choose to pay attention to it or not is a different story. But the uh, laser is going to come into play and it's going to heal that chemical damage. And I'm going to show you how. And then the SFMA and the interventions on that are going to help correct the biomechanical one. So you can do all the laser therapy and all the treatments you want to a painful site. But it's only going to stay there for a little while if you don't go back to what's going on. And uh, that is the key. So I use class 4 deep tissue laser therapy. I use the Light Cure LCT 1000 
which you'll see a link to later. And the reason I do that is basically I want to heal that cell up. And the <clears throat> laser is based on the delivering healing photonic energy into a cell to actually change and regenerate cellular structure. So I can heal up an area, help you get better faster, and make you stronger and more resistant to future injury. So that is what we want to do. We want to accelerate and get you out of pain as fast as possible and then transition you into exercises into that non-painful area. So there's lots of stuff that go on in there when I do a laser therapy treatment. I mean, I'm going to have you look through this, but when people ask me how laser therapy works, that's just a brief picture right there of all the things that it does on a chemical level to send signals back to your brain and release chemicals that can make you feel good and take away chemicals that make you feel bad. So you can kind of go in here and get as geeky as you want to on this one or look up some more information on the uh, laser therapy and how it works. <clears throat> the success, success formula that I use is, uh, like I said before, I'm going to treat the site of chemical damage. I'm going to locate that non-painful dysfunctional area that's causing that chemical damage. And I'm going to treat both and I'm going to attack both at the same time. And then, bam, you're going to get success. It's really quite uh, a very simple formula if you think about it. So let me give you a real-life example to kind of peel uh, what happens in my life every single day. I see a lot of runners in my office because it's a very, very uh, common sport to have injuries in and runners like to run. They don't like to stop and running is a lot of movement. So runners have a lot of dysfunctional movement that they don't realize and it's my job to actually find that. So <clears throat> I have a lot of clients that come in to see me for what they call runner's knee, which is pain around that kneecap or on the outside edge of it. So I had a, a young woman who came in to see me who was an avid runner <clears throat> training for a marathon. And of course, the more miles she put in, the more her body started to break down. And she went to a typical type of physical therapy or massages or stretching and things like that that she thought would be beneficial. And like we talked about before, it felt a little bit better, but it didn't stick around and it kept coming back. So then she heard about me through another runner who had some extreme uh, success with what we did. So I brought her in and the first thing I told her is that, listen, we're not going to chase your pain. I'm going to note where your pain is through all these movements. But I'm not going to chase it. I need to look and see where your problem is really, really coming from because it's somewhere. Nobody's been able to find it yet because you're still hurting. So I put her through the SFMA movement screen and I did a little bit of breakouts in there, which is too much to get into here, but it helps me target in there. And the basic thing that I found was uh, she had some instability in the hip, which means her hip joint on that painful knee. She couldn't control movement well. She had a, basically a sloppy hip. So then she was losing control down in the knee and the knee was overworking. She had a fundamental problem with motor control, which is uh, what we call stability. Her inner core muscles, her sequence, what we call sequencing, her ability to actually perform a movement correctly with muscles engaging at the time that's supposed to, really stuck out at me. So you know, her whole body was struggling to actually do anything and everything to find support somewhere because she was not getting it from her central core system. And that's kind of like a more of a, a neurological thing as opposed to a joint or tissue that's just locked down. Uh, she had a problem in ankle mobility, which is the ability to move your ankle in a normal range of motion, particularly what we call dorsiflexion, which is bringing your toes up towards your knee. And you can see from a running pattern there, if that's decreased, I mean, your knees are going to kill you. So your body has to take up that lack of movement in your ankle, and it's usually going to take it up from your knee. And she also had a decrease in movement and rotation and extension, which is uh, twisting around and around and like a 360 pattern and then bending backwards in her thoracic spine, which is her mid back. So that lack of movement there uh, made a difference on how she was moving her upper torso, her arms and the soft tissue connection that she had from her shoulder to her opposite hip, which fed down into the system of her knee. So. You can see from here that there's a lot of stuff going on outside of her pain in the knee. So this is where I was going to be focusing my therapies after I did the laser. So what did I do? I did laser therapy right on that knee for about six visits just to get some healing energy to the damage that's done there because it was damaged because there is pain. And then I also apply that up into the hip a little bit and the soft tissue down into the body uh, and what we call fascia, which is the connective tissue matrix of the body. I restored ankle mobility in there for her. I had to do a little bit of a manipulation in there, which is uh, something where we actually moved the joint because it was pretty locked down. And then I showed her how to do what we call ankle mobility drills that you can see also on my YouTube channel. If you click on the website here at the end, you can go to that and type in ankle mobility secret and see that guy in action. So we optimized the thoracic spine rotation and extension through some laser therapy in the mid back and some rotation exercises, got her on a foam roll to bend backwards and really open up that thoracic spine. And we did rolling patterns, which is a kind of a, what we call a neurodevelopmental thing where I want to teach her body how to sequence movement. And it's a very, very 
uh, demanding and strenuous thing if you can't move. Uh, it's a, quite a workout, but it should be very easy for you to do. And you can see some of uh, my videos on YouTube on rolling patterns and also type in the rolling patterns and my name on the internet and see a nice uh, article that I did uh, for Carson Bodeker's uh, blog site. And we did some hip stability patterns and uh, quadruped, which is down on all fours and her hands and her knees because she had a very difficult time controlling her hip stability in a weight bearing condition uh, or even in what we call half kneeling where one knee was down and one foot was forward. So I had to get her down and take some pressure off that hip quite a bit. So she started on the quadruped and then I'll work my way up to standing. So we want to make sure that she can own these movements and not overload her nervous system and then just try to cheat to get a movement done. We want her to uh, what we call do self-limiting exercise, which means that own it for yourself and move up to the next level when you've mastered it. It's not about the qual quantity of the movement, it's about the precision of the movement. I gave her two exercises to do, basically her ankle and her mid-back, and I told her to stop stretching because she was stretching all this tightness in her body, but she was actually taking away the only safety mechanism that her body was able to give her, and that's tightness and stiffness. So if you start going in there and trying to release all these tight muscles and nothing lets go, you're messing with a compensation mechanism of your body and you are setting yourself up for pain. So she was actually making herself worse by stretching all these muscles in her leg and her hip. So what we needed to do was we needed to actually go in and find the muscles for her that were weak and that what we would call offline, that were not engaging at the right time. We turn those guys back on and those tight muscles can finally let go. So remember, tightness and stiffness is not always something that has to be stretched. That's where you'll learn that from the SFMA to determine if you're really dealing with a mobility problem where joints are locked down or what we call tissue extensibility dysfunction where it's a uh, lack of movement because of tissue restriction or whether it's a stability problem and that means motor control. So you never want to bring a mobility problem to a stability correction which means that if you're trying to gain some core stability and you've got a lockdown joint you don't want to be playing in that arena and Greg Rose from TPI Institute says don't be a rookie that's a rookie mistake so <clears throat> you need to find that out and discover that path with the SFMA. <clears throat> and the outcome for her, well, <clears throat> her pain was reduced 80% after the first, first session when I did her. A significant reduction in pain, swelling, inflammation, and edema around that knee. And basically what we did was we just gave her body a break. I mean, it was actually saying thank you very much for finding what was really going on. Now I get a chance to rest and recover. So when she goes out and she wants to run again, she's not going to get that to come back. And that's a very, very pronounced improvement. And that's the kind of changes that I like to see in somebody. So she was released from care uh, with zero pain after four sessions. I ended up seeing her for two more sessions just for a little bit more rehab on there. And I told her to keep up with her exercises and come see me about every single month so I can do some evaluations. And sent her back to her running coach to make sure that her skill and technique and running was there. And I was only going to deal with base foundational movement. So movement training is different than exercise training. You have to go about it a little bit differently than what you're doing. So it's a great way to work with an athletic coach um, in whatever sport or athlete that you want to work with. So the lesson here is that one, I want you to find a system. I don't really care what system that you want to use, but you have to find one. And in my opinion, after doing this for so many years, the SFMA is top dog. That's top of the food chain. It's the only one that I use and I start there from the base on everybody. Remember to treat the site and source of the problem because you're always going to have two. There is always both, so you have to find it. The evaluation is paramount. Take your time to look at the body to make sure you're going the right way. If you do an intervention and you do a treatment and you're not noticing an improvement when you retest something, then that means it's on you. You're going down the wrong way. You have to step back, expand your scope, see what you're doing, and also communicate with your client to make sure you're not doing anything when they leave the office to interfere with your care program. And stop chasing pain. Stop just looking at where it hurts and look at the global picture, but treat both. And in my opinion, you should get a class for deep tissue laser therapy. Uh, they're more pricey than the class threes, but you know, if you want to play in this end of the pool, you gotta invest in some high quality medical equipment. It's a wonderful, wonderful combination to do together. And learn the SFMA. You can go to workshops and seminars or get the book that I'm going to show you to get in through here. Just expose yourself to that thought process and that paradigm. It's just really understanding the clinical thought process of looking at the human body and understanding what is really going on and how it is trying to communicate with you. So for more information, you can visit me on the Stop Chasing Pain websites. I've got painlasercenter.com, which is geared a little bit more towards the laser. And I've got some free downloads and stuff like that. Stopchasingpain.com is geared a little bit more towards the teaching aspect of it. If you want to have some workshops or seminars, 
Lightcure.com is the laser that I use, the LCT-1000, and they also have a new 15-watt laser called the Light Force. And you can also see some webinars and seminars I've done for them that are also available on the YouTube channel and on Lightcure. Um, and you go to uh, functionalmovement.com. I see in through here looking at it right now. I forgot the C in that guy. So uh, that is functionalmovement.com, by the way, but actually it could be fun as, as well because it's a lot of fun to do this sort of thing. And uh, look at movementbook.com. That is uh, one where Greg Cook's uh, book on movement. It will give you a nice big exposure to the, to the picture here. And feel free to contact me through the information on the websites if you have some additional questions. I'm always here to help you, and I love this stuff and what I do. So I want to thank you very much for tuning into the podcast or in the webinar here. And we came into about almost 20 minutes, which is perfect. So uh, again, visit the websites, contact me if you have any questions. This is Dr. Perry from StopChasingPain.com. We will see you soon on the other side.